sailor ain't the sailor ain't the sailor anymore. Hello again, everybody. My name is Gerald Tostavork. I'm a licensed real estate agent in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, and you're watching the real world of real estate. Today it is September. What is it? Nineteenth, September nineteenth, I think. Twentieth. Twentieth. Twentieth today. We're in uh, beautiful St. John's, Newfoundland, and I've got my friend Scott Thorne with Century Twenty One here in St. John's, and I thought we'd talk a little bit about the lovely city of St. John's and the and the province of Newfoundland. So, uh, Scott, welcome to the show, and maybe take a minute tell the folks a bit about yourself. Uh, well, I'm a licensed realtor here in St. John's. I've been in the business about 17 years. I've been involved with the local board here. I grew up here. I was born here. And uh, I guess that's pretty much about it for me. <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and so um, let's start out with a bit about the history of St. John's or the history of Newfoundland. Maybe tell us just a bit about the history. So Newfoundland um, is one of the, I guess, the first... One of the earliest, earliest settlements in North America was in Newfoundland. It was originally uh, settled by fishermen. You know, and fishing with the Grand Banks offshore was a major industry here, and fishing was what drove, I guess, the early settlers to come here for the fish. Um, so in St. John's, and you know, is was predominantly an English settlement. He had some other areas outside of St. John's was a French, and so St. John's was a, actually you know, fortified. So if the French tried to invade. You know, they, would, they had four cannons out faith, protecting their harbor. Um, in World War II, it had some significance as well. There was a listening, listening station in... A listening station? This, the United States had a private military base in Argentia. And that was... Newfoundland wasn't part of Canada yet. Mm, no. We, did, we joined Confederation in 49. 40, so. Was it its own country still? <laughs> we, we are part of the British... But, I think we're actually part of common. We're yeah, we're part of British rule okay. on the. We did have our own government at one point as a separate independent government, and that didn't really work out. <laughs> and then they went back under under British um, under British rule or British government. Okay, all right. Well, let's now uh, let's talk a bit about the economy in Newfoundland, St. John's. What are what are the main drivers of the economy here? Uh, well, obviously, the fishery was always our biggest main driver. Um, so we do have we still have with the cod moratorium and the cod fishery sort of petered right out. But we still have other fisheries that are very important to the province. Um, offshore oiling offshore oil is a big big uh, industry offshore for the oiling is that oil, the uh, oil no, <laughs> offshore oil is a big industry here. Whereas in Alberta you have it online we have have it offshore. We don't have much offshore in Alberta. No no no, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, and tourism is a big industry. There's a lot of tourism, tourism, and mining. Um, actually, in Central Newfoundland right now, they've have discovered one of the largest gold finds in in a long time in the world, and it's still being explored. And, and a lot of mining companies are now staking staking out claims and and doing a lot of test drilling and stuff. So. And I can see why the tourism is so big here. It's my wife and I are our first time in Newfoundland here for the conference. And we landed, uh, our ferry landed in uh, Port of Basque, which is as far as you can get from, from St. John's by highway. So we drove the entire province of Newfoundland and it's absolutely beautiful, very rugged. I see why they call it the rock. It's one big rock. That's a, there's lots of rock. But yeah. Beautiful hills and many, many lakes, a lot of big lakes. I imagine the fishing is probably good both offshore and within the, the province. Yeah, there's... You know, salmon rivers. You saw we, you know, we had a lot of salmon, salmon up the river. So you get the Atlantic salmon for people fish Atlantic salmon. Um, trout in the ponds. Like we don't have any lake trout, big, but we can get some nice, nice big speckled trout um, or mud trout. As they call them locally. Um, mud trout. Mud trout. They call them, <laughs> yeah. Um, which is actually the speckled brook trout, but they call them mud trout locally. Uh, you get. Some of them in Twitter are landlocks or salmon um, and brown trout. They're the three main what people will trout fish for. Okay. People say you're going fishing. When people say you're going fishing, they mean cod fishing. If you're going trouting, you're going trouting. <laughs> you're so you're, good. Yeah. The Newfoundland lingo, we're going trouting. Yeah, you know, yeah, right? Yeah. But yeah, because because fishery was always the main industry, especially for all rural Newfoundland. So I'm going fishing. That's what you're doing. You're fishing for codfish for right? Cool. All right. Well, let's get into the culture a bit because I know in here in St. John's it's been uh, really beautiful that we went down George Street 
maybe maybe talk a bit about the culture of George Street or any other areas or, or things of, of Newfoundland or St. John's culture? Yeah, so George Street is a street of pretty much nothing but bars. Um, <laughs> it's more bars per square foot. pubs and a lot of live music. Yeah, a lot of live, and a lot of live Irish music. Um, the Irish culture, just outside of St. John's, it's what the area they call the Southern Shore. There's a lot of, that's where all the Irish immigrants came, came to the land settled. You have a really lot of Irish, you know, Irish, you call Irish Newfoundland bands. We celebrate St. Paddy's Day, probably second, only second to to Ireland itself. Like, we're to, if you're going to go St. Paddy's Day, you can't get to Ireland, you come to St. John's. We, and did they come during the potato famine, or what? Yeah, a lot of them came during the potato famine. Uh, yeah, okay. and then they they basically settled on what they call the Southern Shore, which is the Southern Shore of the Avalon Peninsula. And do they have shut-ins here? A shut in. I have a friend in uh, London, England. Well, he's outside of London. Hi, Howie. And uh, in the pubs there, they'll have a shut in where they, they close the doors, lock it up. And they go all night long and, all, and they go into the morning and until everybody's done. Yeah. No, no yeah. shut ins here? No. You won't. <laughs> yeah, but you do have kitchen parties. Tell us a bit about Newfoundland kitchen parties so and the, how that happened. So, the other, I guess the original kitchen parties. So, in rural Newfoundland years ago, you had a, a smaller home and it was heated by a wood stove. So the main central focus of the home was the kitchen, because that's where the stove was. You used it to cook, but it also heated the house. So whenever you got together, guests came in, and you had a little party or a little social, it was in the kitchen, and that's where your heat was, right? And that's where the, and I used to, I used to, you know, used to go around the bay to my grandparents, or we call it in town or around the bay. So like, we're all Newfoundland, pretty much around the bay, because everybody lived around the bay, except for, say, central Newfoundland, which is not inland, but, yeah, uh, you know, I'd go up to my grandparents' house and the kitchen was where they stayed. If they were in the kitchen, it was a day bed or in the kitchen or a couch. And my grandma used to sit in a rocking chair and knit. The kitchen table was there, the wood stove was there because they still heated with the wood stove. They didn't have electric heat, but they didn't really use it. Right? And, you know, my other grandmother, you know, grandparents, a lot of time was in the kitchen. You'd be playing, playing cards or having a drink in the kitchen. Now, she did use her living room. She had a, a bigger house and a bigger family. But yeah, for the most part, the kitchen was the focus point of the house. And so when you had a party, it was in the kitchen. Oh, wow. Well, that's so cool. In fact, we had a Newfoundland kitchen party last night. Did you make it out? I made it to a little bit of it. Oh. Uh, I was out with some of the other guys um, watching the football game, but got over for the last hour of it. And well, we missed you. We left after the, before that. Yeah, so I got over the last part of it. So. And it was cool. There was a great band there, a local band. Called Kitchen Party. Oh, they're called Kitchen Just Party. Just the name of the band, Kitchen Party. But they spell, and, they spell party with an I instead of a Y. Oh, really? That's they, how they differentiate, I guess, some oh, cool. Kitchen Party. And I don't know when you were there if it happened, but while we were there, one of the original members of Great Big C was present. He jumped up and joined them for a few songs. Okay, no, I missed that. Oh, yeah, it was really oh, cool. Was that a one there? Um, the fellow with glasses, a guitar player with glasses, is on. Uh, I don't know the names of them, okay. of them but it was really cool, it was cool. fun to watch. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know who he was, but you're looking at him like, this guy's a pro. Yes. And uh, my wife heard, and later on she told me he was from Great Big C. But okay. let's finish off with one last question for anybody who's thinking of coming out here to The Rock. What's the draw? What's what's the draw? What's so nice about living in Newfoundland? What's the, to visit as a tourist or to live? To visit, to live. Yeah, like, I, I guess it's, it's the culture. It, it has a lot of history being... You know, the oldest, one of the oldest parts of, of you know, Canada and North America. Uh, it's not the weather, that's for sure. <laughs> you know, when I was a young man, I worked construction many years yeah. ago when Alberta was booming. We had a lot of Newfoundlanders out there. And one thing I remember about Newfoundlanders then and now is they're very friendly people, love to talk and joke and just very friendly culture. Yeah, yeah the people are, everybody says the people are, are the friendliest people in the world that do, you know. There's a few that, I mean, you might run into a scattered person who's, no, but they're probably from the mainland booth here. No. <laughs> and it was so fun going along the pubs, and every yeah. pub's got live music. A lot we of, we yeah. saw a fellow, I don't know if he's a local local thing or not, but amazing singer. His name was Derek Graham. Okay, I'm not familiar with Derek, but yeah, there's a lot. A lot of the bars have live music, especially like the Irish, the Irish bars. But yeah, most of the bars do have live music. Um, they like Shamrock City is one of the local pubs. Like they're... The thing is, there's always a band at Shamrock City. They have Dan, and like most of the bars have, somebody will come in and start like at six o'clock and go to nine, and another, bar, you know, musician will come in from nine to ten, nine to midnight or one. Well, the bars are all close, so two on, so especially on the weekend you'll be 
Yeah, you can party on until two. Actually, they start serving liquor at two. I think we're probably on our open three. So. All right. But yeah, no, a lot of people come just for the scenery. It's, it's beautiful. You know, rocky, rugged. People, a lot of, I've, I've heard a few people say it's like it's like Canadian Ireland because it's a very similar sort of, um, you know, and, and different parts of the province have a different. Like you go on our west coast of the province, we have the mountain range over there in Grossmore National Park, so you can get up up the northern peninsula. Um, when you came across, you came sort of straight across. But yeah, and up the northern peninsula, there's a you know, Grossmore National Park is absolutely amazing. I mean, for scenery and there's like fjords, there's t tablelands. Lots is, of moose in Newfoundland too. And there's lots of moose, so yeah, be careful on the highways. Yeah, especially in the evenings at night. At night, yes. Yeah, so. Yes, yeah, so it was a beautiful drive for us. And one of the things I've noticed about the Maritimes, and especially Newfoundland, is that the speed limit is more of a suggestion than a, than a, than a law. <laughs> so the Maritimes actually are New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, and PEI. We are not part of the Maritimes. Oh, really? No, we're, we're the Atlantic provinces. Oh, cool. So there's a different, like people tell the Maritimes, even, I've even talked to people in the mainland, like in, in, in the Maritimes, think we're Maritimes. No, when you talk about the Maritimes, the Maritimes are typically PEI, New Brunswick, and Nova Scotia. The Atlantic provinces are PEI, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, and Newfoundland. Newfoundland and Labrador. Labrador. Yep. Yeah. Which is wow. our mainland portion. We do have our own time zone for the island, which is a half hour ahead yeah. of the Atlantic. So we celebrate Ken Day first here. We celebrate New Year's Day first here. And so like Canada, New Year's Day up on Signal Hill, they have a sunrise ceremony. So celebrate. So oh, wow. Yeah. There you go, folks. So you might be listening to this to at nine o'clock in Halifax, but nine thirty in Newfoundland. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> well, you see, you have a CBC. You know, they always be on the. Uh, the you know, the game is on at nine o'clock, nine thirty in Newfoundland, right? <laughs> yeah. So Labrador is still on Atlantic time. Oh. This is the island portion that is. Well, wow, I learned, well, that's something new. I learned a few new things today. So, again, thank you. My guest today is Scott Thorne with Century 21 here in St. John's. You've been watching the real world of real estate. Bye for now. Bye. -bye. They gave us an engine that first went up and down. Then with more technology, the engine went around. We know our steam and diesel is for what's a main yard for. A stoker ain't a stoker with a shovel anymore. Don't haul on the rope, don't climb up the mast. If you see a sailing ship, it might be your last. Just get your cities ready for another on the shore. A sailor ain't the same.